Getting to the top takes hard work, and today I am honored to be sitting with Debbie Jenkins, who has recently been promoted to Executive Vice President of Freddie Mac's multifamily line of business. She leads over 900 people and is the first woman to ever hold the position. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you, Marcia, and it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to not just talk about the business and operating the business, but to actually talk about women in leadership, and it's so important. We spend not enough time on this topic. Debbie, in order for us to get to know you a little better, can you tell me how long you've been in the multifamily line of business? Sure, so I've been in the commercial real estate side of the business for nearly 30 years. Um, so it's been a long time, seen a lot of cycles. So you started been, at 12 like I did. I did, in the actually. Yes. I was 11. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, so I uh, came to Freddie Mac about 11 years ago in 2008, right at the heart of the financial crisis. We moved the family from Detroit, which were, is where um, I was born and raised, so to the, to the D.C. area. So you've been at Freddie Mac quite a while in multifamily and got to work directly with David Brickman, who is the new president of Freddie Mac. So can you tell me some of the leadership traits you think is important as you guide this organization through this transition as well as the future? Yeah, absolutely. And I can't say enough. We all know David and we know what he's done, not just for Freddie Mac, but for the industry overall. And getting to watch him from a front row seat as he leads the entire company and the housing industry through the next era is going to be a pleasure. But I would say uh, our styles are actually very different when it comes to managing. And uh, I've learned a lot from him and from, you you know, a, a lot of the management team with our, all of our growth. My style really, I think everything should wrap around your work ethic, first of all. And if you don't walk the talk, I think it's really tough for people to follow you. But some of those traits, I really think, one is confidence. And you can't actually convince people to follow you as a leader if you don't if they don't believe that you know what you're doing and that you have the confidence to make those tough decisions. And another one is collaboration. And I really feel um, I've always been an athlete. I played sports in college, and I think winning and being a team, it's a team sport, mm -hmm. and we're so much better as a team than we are individually. And then the last one I would say is accessibility. And I hope that I project that. And it doesn't matter what your title is or what you do in an organization, knowing that you can actually come into you know, my office and we can have a conversation, I think that's positive. So. I'm going to play off of something you just said, confidence, mm -hmm. because I think for women, a lot of women struggle with having confidence and mm -hmm. being able to go, whether it's for that next assignment or the next rung of the ladder. Can you give advice to women on how to um, build their confidence? Yeah, absolutely. It's that's a tough one, right? If it doesn't come to you naturally, it's something that you really have to work at. And I've experienced that. And I think a lot of us tend to, if, if something doesn't go our way, we tend to sort of ruminate on that as opposed to trying to get past it and thinking about the positive. Um, but I think just pushing yourself and having that inner circle of friends that I would call sort of like your entourage and mm -hmm. making sure that you have women, it can be men as well, right. but that you really count on. And when you've got something important coming up, you can bounce it off of them. Mm -hmm. And d establishing that early in your career, I wish I'd have done it earlier. Let's just right. say that. And I do think it's hard when things don't go your way mm -hmm. to recover and bounce back. Can you tell us a time when you um, recovered from something and mm -hmm. were able to turn that into, whether it's a learning experience or mm -hmm. a way to rebuild a moment where maybe the confidence had been shaken a little bit? Sure. It, it, it's, it's kind of funny because it was my first year at Freddie, mm -hmm. and um, my then um, current, that my boss was Mike McRoberts, who is still mm -hmm. you know, in the industry, a good, good friend. And I was used to hearing things in my annual re performance review that were generally positive and moving. I was very focused on moving up the, up the ladder. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just kicking off the KDL platform and really changing the way that we were doing business at Freddie Multifamily. And, you know, his comment to me was, if you don't start to see the bigger picture, that I'm not going to be as successful as I want to be and not going to be able to move to the next levels. Because I was really focused so much on the result that we mm -hmm. wanted with kicking off our securitization platform that I really wasn't thinking about how other people were feeling as we were pushing something that was scary and new to them. And taking that feedback, um, if I hadn't taken it, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And it's a really important thing, I think, to, to make sure that you can take the feedback, um, accept it, and do something with it, right? And I have heard through a lot of interviews and, mm -hmm. and 
through some women that have, sometimes when you have a male boss, they are apprehensive to give women real direct feedback sure. because they're afraid that um, it would hurt our feelings. And I always say, you're not gonna hurt our feelings, but you'll hurt our careers if you don't tell us exactly what we need to know in order to advance. And so I think it's really important to, as you said, take in the feedback. Mm -hmm. And for managers out there, men or women, please give us feedback so that we can be better and we can learn and grow. Yeah. So I have one final question, okay. and I like to ask it of um, anyone I interview about leadership. Do you think that there are some things organizations can do to encourage more women to get in the management pipeline mm -hmm. so that we really can help get more women into leadership roles? Yeah, absolutely. And I know you're doing a lot with Empower through the MBA, and I think that's mm -hmm. fantastic. At Freddie Mac, we have a women's network that has nearly 2,500 women in the company, and a large portion of that is in our WIN network. Mm -hmm. And I think just those are their organizations, but I think just on the ground level, it's got to be intentional. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that regardless of, you know, gender, that the best person for the job should be the one that gets the job, mm -hmm. but you've got to have a diverse pipeline of folks that you're interviewing. So starting at the ground level, uh, we have a college hire program and we just coming in the door at Freddie Mac, we aim for diversity and just making sure that we're building that pipeline. And to women, I would say, don't step away from the table. Um, you don't have to do that. If there's something going on in your personal life or in your career, take that next step. The guy sitting next to you is not going to hesitate to go for that job. So don't wait till you have every one of those credentials. Oh, so true. Thank you, Debbie, for sharing your time with us and your leadership traits that you think will help make all of us more successful in our careers. Absolutely. My pleasure.